Would you bow with me for prayer? God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and meet in church. And uh, our heart goes out to those that have varying views on what the church is all about. And I ask forgiveness on behalf of County Line and all churches around the world for anything that we have done to misrepresent you. And I pray that uh, as far as County Line is concerned, uh, that we would continue to try to be a church that is bringing hope to our communities, restoration to our communities, uh, one life at a time, that we would just try to have open arms to anyone who walks into our uh, uh, midst here, that they would sense it's a place where they can be accepted and not judged, uh, but a place where we're all uh, in a journey together toward Christ, uh, no matter what stage in that we are in, uh, no one person better than the other. And so God, I pray that as we go through this lesson today, that our hearts and minds will be open to what you have to say, and that when we leave here, uh, we'll have a new appreciation for uh, the church and for what it means in our life. Uh, and that maybe we'll make it more of a priority in our life and be more of an exciting uh, thing to be a part of in our life uh, rather than an obligation. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, most of you know my situation's unique in that I grew up in the church that I'm a pastor in, and because of that, I have all kinds of memories from this place, and one that kind of always stuck in my mind that I kind of thought was a humorous time was uh, when I was in fifth grade, and I was in Sunday school class here at County Line, and our Sunday school teacher at the time uh, was a man by the name of Tom McCowan, uh, who's since passed away, uh, but one, one Sunday morning, we gathered for Sunday school and noticed that Tom was late. And then he became really late. And we then determined, hey, I don't think Tom's coming, and I don't think he got a sub. Now, those of you who know the McCowan family, I know you're going, shocker. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, so as self-appointed leader of the Sunday school class, I said, hey, uh, I don't think Tom's coming, so let's get our Bibles out, let's like open them up somewhere, let's make sure we're all on the same page, you know, so in case someone walks in, it looks like we're doing something spirit, you know, doing a Bible study, and I said, otherwise, let's just talk sports all the whole time. <laughs> so everybody's like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, so we open our Bibles, so we're sitting there talking sports, you know, and stuff, and all of a sudden, the door flies open. And there stands our senior pastor at the time, Al Black. And we were all collective kind of, uh, we're done now. I mean, of all people to walk in, why did it have to be the big dog? We're done, it's over. And he goes, Tom, not here today? We said, nope, didn't get a sub? Mm, doesn't look like it. And uh, you know, he was probably thinking shocker too. But anyway, <laughs> he goes, uh, what are you doing? And we said, oh, just having Bible study. I mean. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe I became a pastor eventually, but uh, so just having Bible study, he goes, really? So I can trust you guys to be in here by yourselves? <laughs> We're fifth graders, what are we going to say? <laughs> yep, no problem. He goes, okay, so he left. So now, so you don't think we're a bunch of hooligans. We did read one verse so that we could honestly say that we read the Bible together, in case anybody asked. So we covered our bases. But anyway, um, but two things we learned from this story. First, for those of you, like I said, who know the McCowan family, probably not a good idea to put them in charge of elementary students, right? <laughs> However, guess who teaches our fifth grade Sunday school class now, 29 years later? <laughs> Tom's son, Tyler. I don't know, call us insane, I guess. But Tyler, could you stand up for a minute? Just, just real quick. I just want everybody to see who to be praying for. Let's pray for this man. Okay. But thank you for your service, though, Tyler. We appreciate it. Uh, the second thing we learned from this story is how our approach to Sunday school uh, back as children mirrors many people's approach to church today. Uh, we enjoyed the friendships we had, but we weren't there because of our deep love for Jesus. We, we were just kind of going through the motions, and it showed when we were left alone. Back when I was a kid, people went to church every Sunday unless you were sick or on vacation. Today, the average Christian family attends church around two times a month. That's the national average. And increasingly, we hear people say, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Basically, they have the attitude that says, why not skip church? What really is the big deal? Well, I failed to mention it last week, but last week we kicked off a new sermon series entitled, Why Not? Uh, in this series, we're going to cover some tough topics that Christians try to justify by asking that question. Why not? Why can't I do this or that? Or why not do this or that? 
Uh, last week, we brought in Jake Larson from Triple X Church to talk to us about the dangers of pornography uh, in our families and how to deal with that. Uh, unfortunately, even some Christians uh, look at porn and say, why not? Is it, is it really going to mess with my life all that much? I mean, what's the harm in it? Uh, we hear all kinds of justifications. In this series, we're also going to discuss abortion and living together before marriage. Yeah, how fun is that? Maybe you should invite your friends to come to those. That'd be good. Um, hey, we have a space problem here at County Line, so I'm doing my best to offend as many people as we can so we can <laughs> make space. I mean, last month I said there's a bunch of Christians in church going to hell and they don't know it, and then now we're talking abortion and living. I mean, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. <laughs> But anyway, today we're going to address those that say, why not skip church? You know, can't I be a Christian and not go to church? Well, when I got married, my wife and I had to decide whether or not we were going to be regular church attenders. You know, we had to make that choice for ourselves. And we decided to be regular churchgoers. But I remember the first time that we ever decided to skip. Because we had a late Saturday night and thought, let's just sleep in and blow off church the next day. And thought, all right, let's do it. And I thought, what can my mom say about it now? I'm on my own. Woohoo, show her. You know? So we we slept in, and I'm telling you, you may think this is weird, but I'm telling you the guilt that I felt that whole day, it was like God was just looking at me the whole time going, really? Really? I rose from the dead and you can't even get out of bed? Really? I mean, it was bad. So needless to say, I never skipped unless it was for a good reason after that. Some of you maybe went through something similar to that. Maybe when you got out of the house, you had to decide, you know, what kind of churchgoer are you going to be? Some of you are diehard churchgoers go every week. Uh, others of you may be in that two times a month category, like the national average. Still others of you may be in that once in a great while category. Uh, I would say some of you are those that go on Christmas and Easter, but you wouldn't be here to hear that. So, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so, so <laughs> some of you may be here today after a long absence from church. You haven't been in church for a long time, or maybe you've never been to church and you're here for the first time. If that's you, we wanna, we're really happy you're here with us. So we're all here for a variety of reasons, but are those reasons valid? Uh, why can't we all just have a personal relationship with God and skip this whole coming together and meeting together every Sunday morning? Well, today we're going to discover that regular church attendance connects you to a life-altering, world-impacting mission. Regular church attendance connects you to a life-altering, world-impacting mission. Uh, let's see why this is true. Throughout the Bible, we see God's purpose was not just the redemption of individuals, but also to form a people. We see it throughout the Old Testament, and we even see it going into the New Testament. In fact, a New Testament passage, 1 Peter 2.10 says, Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. And that people of God is the church, or the total unified people of God, saved through Jesus Christ. And Jesus told Peter, one of his disciples, in Matthew 16, 18, he said, and I tell you, I, or excuse me, I tell you that you are Peter, which meant rock, and that's why he says on this rock. So he says, on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. That's Jesus talking. So a lot of people, you know, they've heard this passage before, and in their head they think, God, or Jesus said he was going to build, he was going to have Peter build his church. Is that what he said? He said, I will build my church. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. So it's Jesus building the church, not man, and that should tell you something about the importance of the church in God's eyes. So while our salvation is personal, God never intended it to be private. God didn't create us to live in isolation from other believers. He expects us to be an active member of his church. Romans 12, verses 4 and 5 says, Just as each of us has one body with many members, members meaning our body parts, our organs, that kind of thing, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. You see that? It's a beautiful picture. So the Bible refers to the church as a body, a human body. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? But if you think about it, every person who is part of a church is like an organ of a body. If you cut an organ out of our bodies and you just lay it on a table, can it live there for very long? 
No, it's going to die wither away, right? That is why the first symptom of someone who's falling away from Christ is usually inconsistent church attendance. We see it all the time. Uh, people who quit coming to church on a regular basis and they'll say things, you know, when you ask them, hey, where you been? I think they'll say, well, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Now, in all due respect, the person who says this is either extremely arrogant or simply ignorant of the facts. For instance, listen to how Paul describes the relationship between a husband and a wife in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. He says, husbands, love your wives. Now listen to say how. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. You see it? Christ died for the church. He died for the church. The church is also referred to as the bride of Christ in Scripture. To say, I can be a Christian and not go to church, is like saying to Jesus, you know, I really like you, Jesus, and I wouldn't mind hanging out with you, but dude, I can't stand your wife. You, know, you wouldn't say that to your best friend, would you? Hopefully you wouldn't. So why say it to Jesus? So we've illustrated how important the church is in the eyes of God, but let's now take a look at a list of reasons why it's important to attend your local church on a regular basis. And there are all kinds of reasons, but we're just going to focus on some. Number one, regular church attendance identifies you as a true follower of Christ. It identifies you as a true follower of Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 35, by this all men will know that you are my disciple. What? If you love one another. If you love one another. Now, it's difficult to love your fellow believers if you don't go to church. And that's what Jesus is talking about there. If you love one another, if my people love one another, that's going to show their disciples. So, and when we come together in love as a church family, from different backgrounds, different races, different social status, etc., it's a powerful witness to the world watching us. You've ever thought about that? I mean, when they look at us and they see all these different people walking into these buildings, different backgrounds, different social status, different races, all this stuff, and they come in and they love each other. You don't see that anywhere else. You might see people coming together at a big stadium for a sporting event, and they all unify behind their team, but they don't love each other. They're not, they're not doing life together. So it's a witness to the world watching us, and it identifies us as a true follower of Christ. Regular church attendance keeps you from being self-centered. Uh, when we are regular members of a church, we learn to care for others and share life with others. 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says of the church, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. We, we see that here all the time, don't we? Somebody's suffering, and we send out prayer requests. People give meals. People are praying for people. People are there visiting in hospitals and such. And they, that's the part, you know, somebody's suffering. Hey, we're all suffering with them. That We all feel it. Even if we don't know the person and we hear about it, you hear me saying something about somebody up front. You, you connect with that. And the honoring part, like we did today with our veterans, you know, when they were up here and we all stood up and we cheered for them, you know, they're honored and we rejoice that. And it was like, those are our family members and they served, yeah, and that kind of thing. It's an awesome place to be a part of. Regular church attendance matures your faith in Christ. You need to engross yourself in the full life of the church. You know, a person can come to church on a regular basis, but still be isolated from other people. Uh, we need others to help us grow and mature in our faith. Ephesians 4.16 says, From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, again, looking at it as a bo human body, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Building each other up, loving each other. Regular church attendance fulfills your role in God's family. 1 Corinthians 12.7 says, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. You see, God has given every believer a gift. His Holy Spirit comes upon them and gives them a gift to use and to glorify Him and build others up. And to miss that is to miss life. It's to miss purpose. Regular church attendance keeps you focused on God's mission. God is using the church, the people that make it up, to reach the world for Him. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. See, when you come and part of a church, you're part of that bigger mission of reaching people for him. When you don't go to church, what's your mission become? It becomes your job, your occupation, your vocation, whatever you do for a living or whatever. It could be your, even your family could become number one where you just, everything's that, and you miss the bigger picture. 
regular church attendance keeps you from straying from Christ. You know, we're, we're called to reach out to our brothers and sisters in Christ who are struggling and bring them back. Bring them back into the body of Christ. Bring them back into the family. James 5.19 says, My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. If you isolate yourself from church, you miss out on that kind of accountability that we all need. You know, I often hear when someone's struggling, uh, their church attendance drops off, and then you find out they're living big sinful life out there. They're kind of turning their back on faith and stuff. And, you know, and people from the church try to go out there and reach them and try to get them back in. And you know what they say? They say, you know, my friends out there really are treating me well. I mean, they're, they're being nice to me. They're offering me a place to stay. You know, they're, they're uh, accepting me for who I am. But my church friends judgmental. I mean, they are so judgmental to me and judging me for how I'm living my life. Here is the difference. Your friends out there, they don't care what you do. They really don't. They, all they care about is that you're happy. They just say, do whatever makes you happy, man. Just as long as you're happy is all that matters. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. But the friends in here, they're not going to put up with those stupid sinful decisions that you're making. They're not going to look at that and say, oh, whatever you want to do, just be happy. They're not going to do that. They're going to tell you the truth because they love you and they want what's best for you. They don't want you out there doing that because they know in here is where the best life is found in Christ. And they want to bring you back to be a part of that. And I'm talking in a loving way. I'm not talking about we get out there and be judgmental to people, but in a loving way, bringing them back to be a part of the family. And someday the shoe might be on the other foot. And you're going to say, you know what? When I was out there living that life, somebody came out and got me and brought me back in. And now there's somebody out there doing that. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to try to help bring them back in. That's the church. That's a beautiful thing. And when you combine all these things that we've talked about, regular church attendance connects you to a life-altering, life, world-impacting mission. It's an awesome thing. So that's just a quick list. Like I said, there's more. But we have to remember that Satan loves to get Christians unplugged from the local church, free from maturing in their faith, free from accountability, free from spiritual leaders in their life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. God created the church to give us purpose to live for, people to do life with, values to live by, a work to do, a power to be fueled by. There is no other place in the world where you can find those things in one place. No other place in the world where we can find all those things we talked about in one place. You know, I wouldn't have given my life to the church if I didn't think it was the most important entity in the world. Nothing even comes close, and I'm not downplaying anything that you do, but I'm just saying the church, somebody once said the church is the hope of the world, and I believe it. You know, you can spend a lifetime, too, trying to find the perfect church, but you'll never find it. You'll never find a perfect church because every church is made up of imperfect people. But God calls us to love imperfect people because that's what he does. You know, this past week, County Line lost a sister in Christ, Ann Harlson. She passed away. She was only 45 years old, uh, lost her battle with cancer. And Ann was on the brink of death, but she would still get to church. Maybe some of you remember seeing her with her walker. Frail, tired, literally near death. And it took everything out of her to be here. But she made it here because she valued what this place did for her spiritual life. I'll never forget her first Sunday here. She said she, her, because of her past, she thought she was going to be struck by lightning when she walked through those doors. But for whatever reason that day, she said, I got to go. And she went, and my sermon happened to be on the forgiveness of Christ. And talked about no matter what you've done in your life, there's nothing you could have done in your life that's too big for what Jesus did on the cross. And she came up to me after that service and said, is that really true? Will he really forgive me for everything I've ever done? And I said, absolutely. And we prayed. And she came every Sunday after that. And she found hope in Christ. She found a new life. And I want to compliment you. She found a body of believers that welcomed her, didn't judge her, loved her. She said, I never, ever experienced a church like that. And so to her dying day, 
she was coming here and wanted to be a part of it. Yet some of us have sporadic attendance simply because we're tired or we stayed up too late the night before. Anne kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't she? Here's what I want you to do. If your church attendance is sporadic, say twice a month or less, I want you to commit to coming eight weeks in a row. Just say, you know what, I'm going to come eight weeks in a row. And I want you to see, number one, if you can do it, but number two, see what it does for your spiritual life. See what it does for your week. See if every week you start seeing, hey, this is really pertinent to my week. Every week it seems like. Or uh, you start hearing the voice of God more often in your life. Just test it and see what happens. If you're here for the first time today, I would ask you to make sure you come to County Line for three weeks before you make a decision. In fact, give any church you try three weeks before you make a judgment call on that church because it's not fair to judge a church on one Sunday. I mean, I could be talking about abortion or something or, you know, living together before marriage or something. You think, I don't want to go there. But anyway, uh, if you're a regular attender that comes every week, but all you do is come to a Sunday morning worship service and then leave, I want to challenge you to try some new things. So you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to bump it up a little bit. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to volunteer for something or I'm going to take journey classes that they offer. I'm going to do something to get a little bit more involved in the life of the church. And then finally, if you're a regular attender that comes every week and you already serve and you're taking classes, I would encourage you to be really diligent in inviting someone to church. And in fact, ask yourself, when last have you sat next to a guest that you invited to church? For some of you, it may be years since that's happened. And I understand that. I understand how it happens. A part of our mission, County Line, that we tell you about every once in a while is at the end of every year, we want every County Liner that calls County Line home to be able to look at at least one individual or family and say, they're here because I invited them. Just one individual or family. And that's not about growing numbers. It's about keeping our focus where it needs to be. Because like I said, we can go years without ever inviting anybody to be a part of what's going on here. So it's a good way of just saying, you know what, every year, all I got to do is invite one person. It just keeps things in perspective. And I'm telling you what, you sit through a service with someone next to you that you've invited, you're going to see things through a whole new lens, and it's going to be exciting for you. I also want to say this as a side note. Growing up in this church and coming every Sunday when I was a kid allowed me the opportunity to develop friendships that have lasted for a long time. And so if you have children, I would encourage you to get your kids here every Sunday, have them be a part of what's going on in the children's ministry department week after week after week, year after year after year, so that they grow up with those kids. Because I'm telling you, those friendships are going to last a lifetime. It's going to mean the world to them. Even if they don't want to be here, if they tell you, I don't like it or I don't want to, get them here and make sure they stay in there. Because that's the only way for them to develop those friendships. We've talked about the church being the body of Christ, so I thought it would be fitting to finish our time together taking communion together, a time when we reflect on Christ breaking his body for the church body. Also, communion is symbolic of the unifying spirit of the church coming together. That's why Jesus wanted us to take it together. So as the ushers pass out the elements, I want you to take time to thank Christ for dying for the church, thank him for the church, thank him for the family church that you have here at County Line. And as, you can go ahead and start passing the elements. And I would just ask you to hang on to those. And then I'll instruct you in taking them later uh, so we can take it all together as a church family.